UFC 268 weigh in recap show, full card predictions, and the betting breakdown. Really looking forward to this one. Some great championship fights, number one contender fight, awesome action. Smash that like button. Let's get at least 115 likes on this weigh in recap show. Much love to everybody tuning in. We got a fun card to break down. If you're new, subscribe, turn those post notifications on. Much love to everybody, really, guys. I, I truly do appreciate each and every one of you. And let's get into UFC 268, the first fight of the night down at the bottom here. CJ Vergara and Ode Osborne. So originally, the pick earlier in the week was CJ Vergara. What I don't like is he missed weight, and it concerns me. Well, look at them on the scales. There's CJ. Look at the fat around the midsection. I'm not seeing this guy in incredible shape, chiseled to the bone. I mean... He looks like there's a few pounds of fat he could get off. I feel like he should have made this weight. Ode, in incredible shape, lean, ready to go. Stylistically, Vergara brings some real power in his hands. He closes distance well. You look at his win on the Contender Series against Bruno Correa. It was quick work, and it was an impressive win. Jacob Silva knockout. He was an impressive guy in the Contender Series, even in losses. Vergara has finished him. Ode Osborne is a tricky matchup, and I really feel like we're in store for a damn good fight. The weight miss concerns me, but does it have enough of a factor to have Vergara losing the fight? He's an underdog that I was high on, but my confidence has now dropped in him. I'll be honest with you guys. I don't like the weight miss. Always concerns me when fighters miss weight and they don't look lean. If he was shredded to the bone and he missed weight, you know that man put it 100%. Ode Osborne is ready to go. I'm going to have to switch the pick. I hate switching picks, but I got to. I'm picking Ode Osborne win by a decision here. CJ Vergara definitely has a shot with the heavy hands and the power, but I feel like the Ode style, tricky guy from the outside, Vergara potentially gassing late. I feel like Ode Osborne can outpoint him and win a decision in this matchup. He's got a tricky game, and I'm picking him now to beat CJ Vergara with this weight miss. I hate doing it, but I have to here. I, it's just what I'm feeling. Now, looking at the odds, Ode Osborne, minus 175, CJ Vergara, plus 165. I like over one and a half, minus 160 a lot here for the prop. That's my favorite prop. But if we're looking at other props, fight goes the distance, Ode Osborne for the win by a decision, plus 335. The value is great there. And I do think he could outpoint Vergara for three rounds win by decision Ode Osborne that plus 335 bet is solid he made weight to face off a little bit of a size advantage for Ode Osborne as well I like Ode for the victory against CJ Vergara who is an exciting prospect just not a good look with this weight miss in his UFC debut let's keep on moving up second fight Melsic Begzadian versus Bruno Souza. Souza takes the fight on short notice misses weight now, the short notice weight miss, you know, more forgivable. He took it this week. Doesn't look in incredible shape, though. Looks pretty soft. And his opponent, Melsic, looks shredded to the bone. Bit of a height advantage for Bruno, but not by much, about an inch. I feel like the striking level of Melsic is going to be the difference maker here. I picked him earlier in the week. I still have Melsic bags out in. I think he gets a stoppage in the second round, KO, TKO, and he beats Bruno Correa, or excuse me, Bruno Souza. And I do expect him uh, to put on a good display. I think he's a hot prospect to watch at 145, 6-1 record. Big win in his UFC debut against Colin Anglin. Win on the Contender Series a year ago that got him signed. Melsic Begzadian for the win over Bruno Souza. Let's check out the props. Now, the odds, minus 315, plus 310. I don't think the Lyoto Machida protege has much of a shot here, that being Bruno Souza. I think Melsic runs him over. Exodian, plus 165, win by KO, TKO. That's the one I like here. Let's see under 2.5. Under 2.5 is plus 110 as well, which is a valuable bet. I like Melsic Begzadian for the win, KO, TKO. And he should beat Bruno Souza in this fight in what is his second UFC appearance. And I'm liking him here, especially Souza taking on short notice. I think he gets stopped. And the next one. Dustin Jacoby steps in on short notice. He takes on John Elan. Even in short notice, this man's a strong favorite. We'll look at them on the scales. It's the first time officially breaking this one down. There's Allen. There's Jacoby. And when they faced off, you could see the height difference was there for Dustin Jacoby. And that's going to be a factor because he's an excellent kickboxer. Pro experience. Fights well from range. I think Justin Jacoby wins this bout. John Allen on the opposite side. 
you know, he's a tricky guy to deal with too. I'm not going to say he has no skill set. He definitely has something to be concerned about. He's a strong boxer with a Thai Esh style of striking, solid hooks when he closes the distance. But Jacoby, just the higher level of experience, the higher level of stand up game for sure. Draw with the Ankute Laba, who I think would beat John Allen too. Not saying MMA math matters, but that's a factor. Dustin Jacoby should get the win. I do expect him to put John Allen away in the third round and what should be a good fight. But if it went the distance, I'm not going to be shocked. Looking at the odds, Jacoby minus 355, Allen plus 320. Let's see. Is there any prop over one and a half minus 180? Jacoby wins, KOTKO, plus 120. Let's see Jacoby by decision, because that might have the best value. That's plus 230, interesting, but I, I like him for, for the win. KOTKO, Jacoby, if he wins in the third round, that's plus 900. You can even find that plus 1100. Kind of like that second and third round prop, plus 475 as well. Sprinkle both as a Hail Mary would be a good play. Dustin Jacoby, KOTKO over John Alan in this matchup. And a good spot on short notice should be a bit of a showcase for Dustin. John Vilante versus Chris Barnett. Holy shit, does John Vilante look out of shape? I mean, Chris Barnett's always the fat boy. Vilante's not used to that. I got Chris Barnett here. That was the pick earlier in the week. It's still the pick. Let's look at the face-off. Or excuse me, let's look at the weigh-ins. Barnett, chubby guy. Man, Vilante looks awful. Did he train for this fight? Obviously, he has a decent skill set. He's been fighting for a long time, but he looks awful. This is Fat Boy Volante. It's his last pro fight. Chris Barnett should get the win. I think he's going to get it done. Potentially late KO, but I could see it going the three rounds. I like the underdog Chris Barnett here. Let's see the odds right now. Volante minus 120, Barnett plus 115. I got Barnett as the underdog all day in this matchup. If Barnett were to win a decision, plus 350, if he were to stop Volante. Barnett would be sitting at plus 255. I don't know why. I'm just, I'm liking that decision more so at the plus 350 tag. As fat as Volante is, he's an experienced guy. Lots of pro fights. He's fought decent competition. He should be able to sit in there with Barnett, but I do think Barnett beats him. Have to go with the beast boy on short notice, looking just humongous as always on the scales. But for Volante, this is not a good look. His last pro fight, he's this chubby. I think he loses here. Chris Barnett for the win as an underdog. Jordan Williams, Ian Gary. I'm super excited to see Ian Gary in action. He's a Sanford prospect. He takes on a tough guy in Jordan Williams. Gary was the pick earlier. He's still the pick after seeing them on the scales, and especially with the face-off height advantage for Ian Gary, size advantage overall. Concerned about Jordan Williams cutting this weight too because, I mean, he's shown that he's not as good at 170 as he is at 185. He's a diabetic, and there's definitely some issues with him cutting weight. Minus 360, plus 330. I feel like Gary's kickboxing will be the difference maker. Fights well from range. Also has decent ground game. Could potentially get this fight to the floor. Jordan Williams, he's a quick guy. He's got good hands, but I don't see him beating Ian Gary here. I think Gary works him for three rounds, winning a decision. Could see him pulling off a sub too, though. Looking at the odds for Gary wins by a decision. They are sitting at well, plus, plus, plus money, plus 365. Gary wins by submission, plus 600. Interesting. I feel like Jordan Williams is going to get beat up in here. I don't see it being super competitive. I think Ian Gary runs through Jordan Williams at 170. And I think Williams is going to need to regroup. Ian Gary for the win in a damn exciting 23-year-old prospect to keep your eye on. Edmund Shabazian. Nazaruddin Imevov. It's a fun fight. Prospect fight. 25-23, 11-2, 10-3. Both guys, I think, have futures in the middleweight division. Nazardina Mavov, definitely the better wrestler. Clearly the better striker is Edmond Shabazian. There's a Mavov. There's Shabazian. The scales are not something that I had any thought about with this fight. I knew both guys would look solid. I know both guys come in great shape. I think Nazardina Mavov puts a wrestling pace on him. He looks to clinch up, get him against the cage. He should win here. That's the pick. That's been the pick all week. That remains the pick. Nazardina Mavov, though, is close money. This fight is not widespread. Minus 115, plus 106. I like that minus 115 for Nazardine. Let's see, is there any props that we could play? 
And Mavov wins by decision, plus 345. I like him with the money line bet because, I mean, I do think he's got the ground game that he could potentially put it on Edmund, but I feel like Edmund's toughness. He'll be able to survive potential onslaughts on the floor. If it goes to three, you're looking at plus 345 if a Mavov gets it done. I see him winning. Shabazian, of course, the KOTKO prop is there, plus 285. He is a knockout specialist. The man's a tremendous striker, but I don't see a lot of striking for him here. I see him being put against the cage. I see this as a tricky fight. I mean, even standing up, you got a lanky guy. And Nazaruddin Mavov, 6'3", 75-inch reach, fights decent with his kickboxing as well. I don't think he gets ran over by Shabazian. Nazaruddin Mavov, the Russian sniper, gets it done against Edmond Shabazian in this fun middleweight fight. Phil Hawes, Chris Curtis. Hawes is the protege just, that just hasn't done it yet. But in the UFC, he's looked good. I got Phil Hawes winning the fight still, even after seeing the weigh-ins. That was the original pick. Curtis coming in shape. There's Phil Hawes. Hall's a little bit bigger than Chris Curtis as well, which I think is advantageous, especially standing up. I feel like Curtis is a durable guy, though. He's going to take the best shots Hall's throws at him. I mean, at least he should. In the wrestling department, I do think he struggles a bit. I feel like being outsized is the factor. I think Hawes wins a clear-cut, unanimous decision, 30-27. I think that his overall game is better than Chris Curtis. He's also the more athletic guy as well. Phil Hawes for the W. I do think he's a high, high confidence pick and definitely a good bet. Minus 290, plus 275. Definitely a parlay addition at the least here for Phil Hawes. Let's see. If Hawes... Wins by a decision. Don't know if I want to touch the props, though. Uh, maybe just like a, a big, you know, multiple unit bet on Hawes. Plus 130 for KOTKO. Hawes wins by decision. Plus 250. Interesting. I do think... Oh, that's actually a unanimous decision. Decision straight for Hawes is going to be sitting at plus 230, which isn't bad value either. I feel like Curtis has the durability that he could sit in there and go the three, but I see him getting worked. Clear cut pick for Phil Hawes to get the win over Chris Curtis in this matchup. Should be a showcase for Phil. Fun prelim in this next one. Really fun one. Ally Aquinta, Bobby King Green. Tense face off, intense fight. I have Bobby Green here. I think he's going to beat Ally Aquinta, but Rage and Al does not go down without a fight. There's Bobby, there's Al. Both guys in incredible shape. Intense face off. They're ready to go. Both are going to be ready to go. Veterans of the game at this point, high level experience for both of these men. Al can bang. He definitely closes distance well and mixes it up with his hooks. He's got fast flurries inside, decent grappling game as well. I mean, he went the distance with Habib on a lopsided decision for sure, but he survived. Bobby Green on the opposite side, slick striker, confident, fights well from the long range. His chin is very solid and his hands are fast. Bobby Green should get it done by a decision. I do think it's a very entertaining fight with both guys bringing the heat. Let's see the odds. Bobby Green, minus 170. Ally Aquinto, plus 160. I like Bobby Green. Wins by a decision. The decision prop for Green, minus 125. It's been bought up. It's expected to happen here. I'd rather just money line it. Bobby Green for the win. If you could get over one and a half at minus 150, touch that. Bet that because that's, I think, a steal. I really see this fight going over that one and a half for certain here. Bobby Green for the W in this great prelim matchup. Overall, this card is good, guys. This card is really good. Featured prelim, Andre Michalidis versus Alex Pajera. Obvious size difference between these two when you saw them face off. Looking at them on the scales, Pajera is shredded. Michalidis looks okay as well. You know, Michalidis, you know, I think he said something. He wants to stand up with Pajera. I have Pajera here, and it's an easy pick for me. But Michalidis, if he looked to wrestle... Could he get Pajeda down? I feel like Pajeda has decent takedown defense, especially with the size advantage, just being the taller and longer guy. He should be able to control range well. In clinch situations, that height's a factor. He's going to have um, you know, that leverage edge inside of clinch positions. I think he stops takedowns. I think he knocks out Andre Michelidis here. First or second round, Alex Pajeda should be an emphatic UFC debut and one that a lot of people are ready to see. Minus 224, plus 220. The guy's got a knockout win over Adesanya. If I was him, I would be talking about Adesanya. I'd be trying to sell that rematch from the start just to build the name because I know he said he doesn't really care about Adesanya or whatever. He's focused on just the title. But I think sell that you beat Adesanya. I don't know. I think that's a way to get fans more intrigued. Under 2.5, minus 150. Pajeda, KOTKO, minus 110. Pajeda inside the distance, minus 125, but he ain't going to win a submission. I like Pajeda, minus 224. I think he's a solid bet, and he should get the W here over Michelidis. Of course, there's concerns, right? If he got put on his back, 
And then next, you know, he looks like a fish out of water. So is there possibility Michelitis does tap him out? That's plus 1,200 if it did happen. I mean, who knows? Maybe you, you hail Mary that. It's unlikely, but the fight game is a crazy one. We got Pereira, though, running through Andres Michalidis. Now, let's jump to the main card. If you guys haven't, smash the hell out of that like button, subscribe if you're new, and turn those post notifications on. And let's talk about this main card opener now, which is Justin Gaethje and Michael Chandler, the number one contender fight in the lightweight division. I have Michael Chandler, but Justin Gaethje is a real threat. This is no gimme fight. This is no guarantee. Chandler's a solid underdog, though. He's big plus money. Looking at the odds, he's sitting at... Plus 185 at best value. So he's a big dog at this point. There's Chandler looking incredible. There's Gaethje ready to go. Could Chandler surprise us all? Go out there and wrestle. Get this fight to the mat. It's possible. He might shock us all with a wrestling heavy game. I mean, you look at Gaethje. His takedown defense against Habib was non-existent. Granted, Habib is another level. But Chandler can wrestle his ass off too. Gaethje wants to bang. He wants to sit in the center and mix it up and go to war with Chandler. Can Chandler touch the chin? of Justin Gaethje and put him down. I believe he definitely could, but I think the opposite could happen as well. Watch for a devastating low kick attack. I do believe Chandler's leg has potential to be compromised. I feel like Michael Chandler will get it done. I think he'll find a way to win by second round KO, TKO. I think he pulls it off, but it's not an easy one. And Justin Gaethje is here. This fight ain't going the distance. I'll be shocked if it did. How crazy would that be if it goes the distance? Imagine Chandler just wrestles the whole night and just shocks us with a whole different wrinkle to his game. Obviously, the plus money is great for Chandler straight. So I would just say money line bet Chandler. But if you want to prop it up, you need to prop it up. Fight ends inside the distance, minus 275, near guarantee, minus 200, under 2.5. I think that's a near guarantee as well. But the fight game does surprise us. Chandler, KO, TKO, plus 455. Chandler wins by decision, plus 530. I like the KO, TKO prop for Michael Chandler, but I would rather just play the straight money line bet because who knows, he might surprise us all. The guy definitely has the tools to go five. We've seen him go distance in Bellator before. Big fight here inside of the UFC. Number one contender bout. May the winner, may the best man win it, and the winner will get a title shot for certain here. And honestly, either would be a stern test or Oliveira or Poye. Obviously, we saw Chandler Oliveira the first time, and that was a war and one I'd love to see again. Gaethje's right there. Great matchup. Michael Chandler for the W. It's a main card opener, um, and it's the best main card opener maybe of all time, to be honest with you guys, because the fights above it are not as good. But it's because Trevor Whitman in the corner, obviously Rose Namajunas, they don't want it back-to-back. -back, so totally makes sense. Now, the next fight, Shane Burgos, Billy Corintillo. I like Shane Burgos, and I like him by a lot here. He's in incredible shape. There's Billy Q. The face off, it just seemed like Burgos' energy definitely got to Billy. I don't know. It's not like he looked intimidated, but you can feel the energy of a guy that's fought the best of the best, and he's seeing Billy Q as a stern test, certainly, but a level difference. This is a real level difference. Shane Burgos is going to run through Billy Q. I think he knocks him out in the second round. The striking level difference is clear. On the ground, Billy Q has great submissions and grappling, but I don't see him getting Burgos there. I think he has to stand up a bit. Takedown defense should be there for Shane. Knockout. Round number two, Shane Burgos, and what's a damn good fight. And I promise fireworks for this matchup. Burgos, minus 180. Billy Q, plus 175. I like that minus 180 tag. I definitely do. I like that minus 180 a lot. We'll talk props, or excuse me, we'll talk parlays at the end. For props right now, Burgos, KO, TKO. I don't think he goes out there and taps Billy Q. Burgos by KO, TKO, plus 250. Solid, solid, solid prop. That is the prop right there. But I, I like Burgos straight a lot as well. I think he runs through Billy Q, and he's damn near a lock here in this matchup. Shane Burgos for the W. Featured bout of the night. Frankie, the answer, Edgar versus Marlon Cheeto Vera. I believe Frankie will have the answer to the Cheeto Vera puzzle here. Styles make fights. Yes, Vera striking-wise is going to be hell for Frankie if he chooses to sit there and mix it up. But can Frankie surprise us showing the wrestling game? Obviously, Vera has decent takedown defense, but Frankie Edgar's a monster when he gets a hold of you. I do think he'll find a way to get inside. I do think he'll find a way to land takedowns and surprise a lot of people as an underdog here. Obviously, 40 years of age. So is he the smartest underdog bet of the night? Absolutely not. But he is one you could potentially play. I got Frankie beating Marlon in what's a hard fight. Looking at them on the scales, both guys in great shape. Intense face-off, too. They're ready to go. I'm going Frankie. I'm going the answer. Win by decision in a hell of a fight. I'm excited to see 
if he's able to stick to a smart game plan and not get beat up by Vera out there. Because obviously we've seen Frankie slept a couple of times. Plus 140 for Frankie, minus 141 for Marlon Vera. Over one and a half lock. I think fight goes the distance. That's minus 150. Okay, so Vera to win by a decision. Let's just talk about that because I do feel like it could happen. Plus 220. On the opposite end, Frankie to win by a decision, plus 225. So interesting, not far widespread for either. Does Vera have a chance to knock out Frankie? It's plus 350. I like Edgar by just a smidge, though. I'll say decision. Fight goes the distance would be the best bet here. Not loving the straight Frankie bet, especially at 40. But I think the game plan should be there and he should get it done. But I don't know if that game plan will be there and Vera may pick him apart. May very well pick him apart. So be very cautious betting this fight. Frankie Edgar, though, win by decision. Co-main event time. Amazing co-main event. The rematch between Thug Rose Namajunas and Wei Li Zhang. I have Thug Rose. I'm very confident in Thug Rose. She looks fantastic on the scale. We'll look at her real quick. Ready to go, as does Wei Li. Um, but I don't think the scale is the story of the fight here. The story is we have a confident Rose Namajunas who just slept Wei Li Zhang. When Rose is confident, she's maybe the most dangerous female in the strawweight division ever. Ran through Yuan and Jacek twice. I expect her to beat Wei Li Zhang here. Could go the full five. Definitely could see Rose Namajunas' decision. Could also see late KO, TKO. I think she's ready for war. I think she's going to outpoint Wei Li. I think it's going to be hard for Wei Li to get inside that range, especially with the speed advantage Rose will have. Even though Wei Li has some new wrinkles in her game, I don't think it's enough for Thug Rose. I still got Thug Rose getting the win. Potential KO, TKO, but kind of feeling decision for Thug Rose here, picking apart Wei Li Zhang. Let's see. My plus 107 for Rose Namajunas, minus 110 for Wei Li. So Rose is the underdog, even though she won the last fight as emphatically as she did. Let's see, what do we want to touch? Over two and a half, minus 185. Because the way the first fight went, it's not worth the risk, I feel here. But Namajunas, KO TKO is plus 435. Namajunas, win by decision, plus 290, plus 300 at best value. Both are two good props. Let's see if there's anything specialized that we could potentially do. Let's see. Nama Yunus. Let's see. Nama Yunus wins in round three to four plus 800. Interesting. That's, that's a potential play. Though I think she gets it done as quick. No, I don't, I don't think it's as fast as the first one. She could get the stoppage. I like Rose money line. I do think we could be looking at decision. I'll pick Rose by late KO TKO in the championship rounds, but don't be surprised if this one goes the full five here. Should be a great matchup. Can't wait for it. Rose Namajunas for the W in the co-main event. Exciting underdog and a confident pick here for her. Thug Rose and still. Main event. If you guys have not yet, smash the hell out of that like button. Much love to everybody tuning in. Subscribe if you guys are new. Turn those post notifications on. Kamaru Usman, Colby, Chaos, Covington. I have Usman, but Colby's not coming out like to lose here. We obviously know. He's looking for the world title. This man is, in my opinion, number two. Number two in the world. He's the number two guy. This is the fairest number one contender fight. Or excuse me, the fairest number one contender this is the guy that deserves it. Colby Covington deserved this rematch. Masvidal did not. But Colby is finally getting it. There's Colby. There's Kamaru. Both guys in incredible shape. I'll be honest. I have a feeling we're going the five. And Usman will be tested sternly by Colby Covington. I think we're looking at a very difficult fight. They'll clinch up. The stronger man will be Usman. The wrestling, though, I don't see him landing takedowns on Covington. The jab should be working for Usman. I expect him to use a lot of straight punches. Kobe will have a super high volume. Usman will clinch him up to slow him down a bit. Expect a smart and intelligent game plan from Usman. Expect high pressure, high volume from Kobe Covington. He's known for a great pace. I'll pick Usman win by decision over Kobe Chaos Covington. I'm going Kamaru. Minus 265, plus 250. I'd love to see it at minus 175 because that would be the one to bet up. I just don't think Kobe has the power to stop Usman. And if we're going the five, I expect Usman to have superior power shots landed, do more damage, and he gets it done in a fight that I am super pumped for. This is a great main event. Fantastic. Back-to-back -back fire main events. Back-to-back -back fire cards. 267 and 268. Back-to-back. -back. Usman, minus 265. Let's see. Usman wins by decision. Let's see what the value is. Plus 180. Does Usman, let's see. Usman in round three or four is kind of kind of what I like here. Usman round three or four plus 500. Tomorrow Usman wins round five or decision plus 150. 
hmm, that plus 500 tag's juicy, but the smarter play would probably be plus 150 because Kobe last time survived. He went out there and went to war with Kamaru. Can he go the distance this time? I believe he will, but Usman, the right man, the man who wins it. Excellent main event here. Overall, solid card. And it is time to talk parlays. We have to. It's the Way in Recap show. That is the tradition for the Way in Recap. Okay. So I'm looking to add fighters to a parlay that I really think come through. Let's go Meltzik, Bag, Zadian. I think he's nearly a must play. Ian Gary, that's minus 165. But because Gary's lower level, we're going to leave him out for now. Shane Burgos, Melsic Begzadian, minus 111. I'm liking this one a lot. Add in the champ Usman, you got plus 153. But if you're nervous of the champ, I believe a lot of people will. Bobby Green, solid addition, plus 193. Let's go a little nuts, though. Let's go Usman. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I think, I think Justin Jacoby should win, but the value just isn't great for it. It'd be plus 391. If we got all these, Melsic, Shane Burgos, Bobby Green, Kamaru Usman, and Dustin Jacoby, you're looking at plus 391. Two fighter parlays, three fighter max. But if you want to go nuts, you obviously can. Um, and the fight game's a wild one. And, and let me just clear it and redo it because I am going to throw you an underdog parlay that I think has some excitement behind it. If you went underdog parlay, you say, I, I want a dog in there. You go Michael Chandler, Bobby Green. Or let's take Green off for now. Michael Chandler, Shane Burgos, plus 323. And now if you really want to test yourself, you're like, man, I, I want to go for it. Plus 754 if you had a Thug Rose. That would be a wild man one, another wild man parlay. Go Usman at the top, plus 464. Meltzik Bagzadian can be the staple of all your parlays, plus 608 for that. Overall, fantastic cards, some good betting spots. I am super excited to see all these fights because this is a great one. Alex Bejeda making his debut, something I'm really excited for. Ian Gary on the card. I mean, too many fights to get excited about. UFC 268, it's a great one. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new here. Much love to everybody tuning in. Let me know what you guys thought of the predictions. Hope you guys really did enjoy. Like this video. Let's break that 115 likes. Hope you guys enjoyed. I really appreciate each and every one of you. Much love to all of you guys. Thank you all so much. And I will see you all in the next video. Peace, guys.